Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is Dragon Soul. Dragon Soul is a two to four player game that takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to play and it's for ages 13 and up and in the game Dragon Soul you are playing as a kingdom. You're going to be creating a grid or a map and you're going to be placing your kingdom on one of the locations on the area as well as everybody else doing the same. Players are going to go through their steps of their turn, drawing soldiers or building castles, deploying their soldiers and battalions from their castles, and moving them around the game board. Utilize your battalions, and inside your battalions are soldiers and archers and knights and spearmen, in order to defeat enemy castles, defeat enemy battalions, and to turn them into dragons. Can you control the most area in enough time to secure your victory for the game or be left in the dust with a two player mode, a three player free for all, or there's a team mode for 2v2 and a free for all as well? Will you be the deciding victor in the game Dragon Soul? Find out as we go through the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin the game Dragon Soul, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. And with that, you will then look at the book of maps, which is found on the opposite end of the rule book. In the book of maps, you're gonna go through the pages and they're going to be, well, you guessed it, maps. These maps are going to have a specific detailed instructions list on the bottom of it. Whether it be a medium map, a small map, or a large map, it will tell you the number of players that can play the game for this map and the type of strategy conditions required for it. Oh, I'm playing a two-player game here for the instruction setup, and so I've selected this specific map, which is a two-player map. I am then going to go ahead and basically place all the pieces according to the map onto the table in the middle of the game board. First, start with the outside board, and then proceed with the double-sided tiles and place them in each of their slots presented on the game board. Each player is then going to get to choose a color. I'm playing blue and red here. I place the blue castle on the blue castle starting location based on the map and the red castle as well. From there, you'll shuffle the deck of the soldier slash battalion cards here, set aside the dragon tokens, which you'll be utilizing for attack and defense next to the deck somewhere, and then give each player their supplies. Each player's supplies are going to start with their main board here. The board is going to explain the step-by-step -step instructions for their turn, the battle outcomes for the dragon flip, and the back is going to explain the attacking and defensing, as well as just straight up combat involved in the game. Place it so that you can see step one face up, and then take all your castle pieces and place them on one side of the game board. Take all your battalion markers that are the large ones and place them on the other side, and all your small battalion markers as well next to those tokens. Each player is also going to get a dragon marker. Go ahead and take that and place that somewhere within your reach, as well as your reserves marker. From there, once you have your castle set up and everything on the field is next to you of your color and the deck that is shuffled from the battalions, you're basically ready to go. Set aside any extra cards you're not utilizing or extra tiles as well as the extra game boards and you can begin Dragon Soul. Playing the game Dragon Soul is actually quite simple and you're just going to go ahead and follow these step-by-step -step instructions from 1, 2, and 3 on your turn order board in which you'll pass and the game will continue from there. Step one is pretty simple. You can either draw soldier cards equal to the number of uncontested castles you have on the field, or you can go ahead and build a castle provided that you have a battalion in the middle of a blank space. To draw cards, you will check each uncontested castle on your field. And in this case, I only have one castle. It is uncontested because there are no enemy units around it. So I would just simply draw one soldier card and add it to my reserves. However, if I did not want to or couldn't draw for whatever reason, I could instead use a battalion that I have on the middle of a blank space and I could gain a castle onto that location. But it means I don't get any extra soldiers for the turn. Once you've chosen to either draw cards or place a castle, you'll simply move on to step two. And step two is the ability to deploy soldiers and battalions to your castles. And the way you do this is you check your reserves. That is the number of soldiers that you can place in either new or the ones that you already have for battalions on the field that are on castles. I have no battalions currently available to me, but I am able to make them. So I could take this one card if I'd like, and I could turn it into a battalion. The way I'll do that is I'll take my large marker and I will place the card under my large marker. So I have a battalion one with the one soldier I gained and I'll place this on my castle, the small marker on my castle to symbolize that is where my battalion is. So over here on the left-hand side is how many different soldiers I have in the battalion. And then on the game board symbolizes that marker. And so you can move this around the game board. After I have made my soldiers, and like I said, if I had an extra battalion on the castle and I had extra soldiers I can use in my reserves, I could add them to existing battalions as long as they're on the castle. And you're able to kind of 
place additional ones. But however, whenever you place a soldier in a battalion, you're not able to ever return them. You're not able to switch them out. They stay in the battalion. The last step in the game is you're going to be able to move or attack with your battalions in order starting from one. And then the dragon will move last. And as you can see, there are a number of battalions. So you can have a total of six in this game. And you'll move battalion one, two, three, four, five, and if you have it, six. And then of course you'll move your dragon marker if you have your dragon marker. In this case, I just have one battalion. So I'd simply move it to any one of the corners of the um, toke, uh, basically tile that I'm starting on. So I'm starting on this castle tile, so I can move it to any of these areas. You're always able to move from the middle of a hex to any of the outside edges. And then once you're on an outside edge, you can only move to other outside edges that connect to it or to the middle of one of the hexes. Uh, the trees areas are basically um, immovable terrain. They're not gonna allow you to place castles there. And the souls area are not able to place castles there either, but there is a unique effect, which I'll explain later. So in this case, I'm just going to deploy it on the corner here. And so every time I move this guy, I just move it from corner to corner to corner to corner to corner to corner to get to where I need to go. And now I've done it. I've drawn soldiers, placed those soldiers into a battalion and placed them in my castle, and then I've moved those soldiers. I am done. My turn is over and the next player's turn begins. They would simply draw soldiers, they could then create battalions with the soldiers, so from the reserves to battalion one, and then they can go ahead and move. And it would progress from there. There's all, that's pretty much the entire game. There's nothing else as far as how your turn works, but there are certain things that you can do in your turn. We'll go ahead and cover them now. One thing is a soldier can go from, like I said, a side space to a middle space when moving. And when they do so, uh, instead of creating soldiers on that next turn, they can simply gain a new castle. And when you gain a new castle, that will give you more cards to draw, which we can add to your battalion. So more castles equals more soldiers, provided they're not contested by enemy units. Contested being an enemy unit is blocking those from being utilized. Um, another thing too is in the deck here, like I said, there are four main units that you'll be using. Soldiers or foot footmen, there's going to be uh, pikemen and knights and archers, but there's also a thing called a dragon soul. And there are a few of them, but these cards are very powerful. And you can use them in a battalion to, if I can find one here, here it is, to get to one of the dragon soul locations on the game board. And in this specific map, there are three. So if I were to draw this soul stone here, I can place it in a battalion. And as the battalion moves around the game board, it can stop to any middle of these uh, soul stone areas. And I can convert that battalion and every unit in it into a dragon. And that dragon will function just like soldiers do in pretty much every way, except in combat, it's a little different. So let's talk about combat for this game. If you ever are going to initiate combat in this game, what's gonna happen is one unit is going to meet up with another unit. And when they get there, you'll be, you'll be com combating each other until only one battalion remains. And how that works is it's simultaneous card placement, reveal those cards, determine the winner, and progress from there. You can check the back of your playing board to determine how this works. So if I am the attacker and I play a archer and you are the defender and you play a spearman, the archer is going to win. If we ever play the same unit, you can check to see on each side who wins in a tie. Attackers will win in tie when it comes to knights and footmen and the defender will win in a tie if it comes to archers and pikemen. And otherwise, you'll just look at the track and it'll point like knights are always going to beat the footmen, footmen will always beat the spearmen or uh, pikemen, and then the um, <laughs> archers can actually beat the knights, uh, you know, the knights and the pikemen, but will lose to footmen. And that's how the game works. I'll play one out, you'll play one out, we'll reveal. If the attacker wins, the attacker is going to have that card get revealed e instead, of, um, instead of going back into their hand face down. So I'd have to reveal this so that you now know this, uh, this is a card in my hand that I can utilize. And if you're the defender, when you win, you can actually just put it back into your hand face down. So whenever you play a card as an attacker, even though it stays in your battalion, if you survive with it, it's gonna come back to you face up. So now players will know what card that is in your battalion. Any card, however, that gets destroyed or defeated in battle is gonna to go to the discard pile. And what happens is eventually one of the battalions will lose, 
all the cards will get removed, and the re re winner will re remain. The other battalion will get removed from the battlefield. And that is how combat works. It's a pretty simple back and forth simultaneous card um, placement, reveal, defeat, and progress until there's one winner. Now, dragons. Dragons are a little different. If I had my dragon out and battalion one was out against the enemy, when the dragon re meets them, uh, the defender is going to get to roll the, or flip, the shield wall and ballista attack, and then I, as the dragon, will get to do the dragon breath and dragon claw. And you're going to take these, one for the attacker, which is the dragon, and one for the defender, which is the player playing with the battalion, and you'll flip these guys. From there, you'll check the results. I've got Dragon Claw here, and they have Ballista. Half the battalion is defeated, rounded up, and the defender gets to choose. And so dragons can unleash extreme fury. There are four different ways this battle will end with a dragon. It is either the entire bat battalion is defeated, uh, the dragon gets defeated, a stalemate, meaning nothing happens, or half the battalion gets defeated, rounded up. So the dragon is always gonna have a slight benefit when it comes to combat, but it does require a bit for the dragon to work. You have to get a battalion with the soul stone into the middle here, gain the dragon. If a battalion has a soul stone in it and gets defeated, that soul stone gets removed. It's not actually able to start any combat. If you just simply have a soul stone and you're just trying to move it along, pretending like there's soldiers there and get to the middle, that soul stone gets combat, then it's just gone. You, you don't get anything. So it is a risk to put that card into a small battalion, but it's a less risk to put in a large one, but you lose the entire battalion when you place that card in the center or the, the, the battalion in the center and remove it for a specific dragon marker. So it's kind of a, a toss up as to what you'd like to do for that. Um, and that's pretty much all the main aspects to the game. You're going to be gaining more soldiers the more castles you have. You're going to be utilizing your soldiers to not only create blockades on people's castles to prevent them from gaining more units, but also defeating castles by placing your battalion on their castle. And if left undefended, that castle will turn into your castle, which is a very important thing in this game because in this specific one, whoever has six castles is the winner. And that's basically the way you play Dragon Soul. We'll talk about some unique aspects to the game and uh, give you my review now. Dragon Soul is a board game version of an RTS, a real-time strategy game that plays like Starcraft and Warcraft, Age of Empires, and Command and Conquer. Yuri's Revenge, the good one. And basically it functions like kind of a tactical game, but you're building castles, gaining points for each castle, which then give you more units. Units go into battalions. You move those battalions around the game board, fight other players' battalions, defeat their castles, and then of course add your own castle. Your objective is control, area control, controlling each portion on the game board that allows you to place a castle on it, which gives you more resources. In a two-player game, this is kind of a push, push and pull tug of war until one side wins the advantage. And usually when that happens, there's a tumbling spree. Basically, if I have four castles and you have four, you capture one of mine, now I've got three and you have five. And then the whomping starts to begin unless I can pull up a tricky tactic. And that's gonna be really important in the game, trying to utilize moving around the game board with your battalions and the type of cards in your battalion. There's a luck aspect to this game as well. Uh, you'll be able to gain cards from the deck there with your castles, place them in your reserves and determine where they go, which of the specific battalions you want to put them in, how many of what type of unit, and also be kind of checking each battalion your opponent has and the type of units that they have in their specific battalions as well. You know for a fact that they have archers in their battalion and pretty much just archers. Well, then you're going to need to send in a full set of foot soldiers to deal with them. However, maybe they've got archers and pikemen and you definitely don't want them to be the defender if you have any of these in your specific battalion as well because they'll win on ties. Unless, however, you've got a ton of footmen still and you'd like to just decimate them and it doesn't matter. So kind of keeping track of things and remember as an attacker, you do get the benefit of trying to, um, just, you know, you kind of get to, if you know what they are as a battalion, you can kind of send your units in and deal with them. But the defender always gets to bring their stuff back without revealing it, whereas you have to reveal it. And so a few little um, things with the rules that were uh, a little, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I was right about it, but like, for instance, uh, when you, you simultaneously play 
you're the attacker, you win, you bring your guy back and it gets revealed face up. I'm pretty sure we still pick simultaneously, it's just the defender will place first and then I can place my spearman. So they don't know that I'm gonna actually place my spearman, they just know that I have one in there. And the same is said for any other cards that remain face up on my side of the field. I don't think that I have to actually tell them that I'm placing a spearman before they choose. I still think there's a, a bit of, okay, well I know he has a, two of these uh, spearmans here, and uh, I call them spearmen and pikemen, they're interchangeable, I guess. <laughs> and uh, a swordsman, so I, I know what type of units he has, but not necessarily which ones. But I, I could be off on that. Um, additionally, too, there's a dragon soul aspect to this game. Dragons are very powerful, but they can become very costly in the game. And if you place your battalion on a space that gives you uh, the dragon, because you have a soul in it, uh, this guy can potentially wreck some serious battalion butt. However, it can also get removed. And that can be very costly for you if you have a large battalion there. You have to kind of manage your resources, and your resources are not only your castles, but how many units you've gained from those castles. There's also a cool little aspect to the, an expansion that hopefully will be coming out shortly, which is going to be uh, these uh, spell cards here, which we have played with as well. And these pre pre provide a whole unique light to the game. It becomes a little less tactical, I'd say, um, in the terms of like moving around units and watching where they play. And now you have these cards that you can spend your reserves on, and any extra soldiers, to cast as magical spells that stay on the field. And you can utilize these once every turn, and they don't go away. And maybe now, if you are two spaces away from an enemy castle and you cast a spell, you can simply jump onto it and kind of surprise your opponents by taking over their castle, so some strong cards, or defeating a battalion as long as you have a dragon soul in your other battalion that's adjacent to that specific battalion, and you can pay three specific units from your reserves. You're always gonna be using the reserve units as either characters in battle or as mana with these extra spell cards. And this definitely changes the game up a bit and changes how you want to utilize your tactics. It starts to, you start to focus on how many units they have in their reserve, how many spell cards they have, and whether they're gonna use those units for defense or as a spell as they're moving towards you. And so there is a good chunk, and I mean a large variety of different spells that can be used in the game that can definitely change the gameplay. And then the base game, it's really like straightforward tactics. There's no really surprises other than what is in your, un your unit's battalions that you're fighting up against, whether they have a soul stone they're gonna try and gain a dragon with, and how they're trying to corner you and pin you down in certain castle locations. This is a fun game. This actually reminds me of, it's like a little, like a simplified version of Zavarius. There's not as like many numbers and keeping track of HP totals and all that. You're just simply taking your cards from your battalion against somebody else's and you're gonna go ahead and flip them over. Bam, I reveal a swordsman versus your archer. Let's check to see. I'm the attacker and I've got my swordsman. They've got an archer, I win. This guy gets defeated. And then this guy will come back face up to me. Bam, next one, Spearman versus Spearman. Okay, I'm the attacker, Spearman wins for the defender, so my Spearman will die. And that's how the game works. Battalion versus battalion, keeping track of certain things, area control, and utilizing your units the best as you possibly can with a little bit of luck as to what your opponents are playing. This is a solid, fun, tactical game. So quality is really, really nice and works very, very well. Um, you can have different maps, different game boards. This is obviously, in my opinion, gonna be better at four players than it is at two and three. I don't mind the team mode or the multiplayer mode. I think both of those function very well and are very fun. Two player mode is my least favorite because it basically snowballs at a certain point. When somebody has enough resources on you, you just pretty much can't come back unless you're playing with something like the spell deck that can actually give you kind of a chance to pull ahead. Overall, Dragon Soul is an excellent RTS style board game. If you're looking for a game like this, which there aren't very many of, then here's where you can take a look at it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dragon Soul. If you're interested in picking this game up, there's a link down below where you can instantly go ahead and purchase it now out for retail. And if you would like, you can hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button. You can see new videos that we produce every other day or so, plus our live streams on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. Looking forward to showing you some more games, and of course, this one as well. We'll be streaming live. You can watch us play the four player game. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to busting up my dragon soul and annihilating your battalions next time. <laughs>